Well, everybody, there is the time and date, and we are inside to do an LED replacement on the instrument panel of the 1998 Toyota 4Runner. We're going to be replacing five bulbs today. We're going to be replacing three of these main backlights here for the dials, the speedometer, the tachometer, and the fuel gauge. So these are backlights. And then we're also going to be putting in two small bulbs, they're number 74s, for the turn signals. You can see here's the back of the speedometer unit. We just took it out. The instrument cluster right here. And you can see most of these bulbs has like a print-on flexible plastic circuit layout right there. These bulbs just come right off, you can see circuit base. This is number 74 and the larger ones are number 194. So for the backlights right here, this bulb right here is what they call a green condom or a little latex thing that's tinted green. It's kind of odd but the whole color scheme inside the 1998 Forerunner has this ugly green tint. And it's not too bad on the other instruments such as the climate control unit or rings around the buttons. It actually looks pretty nice but it doesn't look too good on the whole instrument cluster here including the tachometer and speedometer. It has that ugly greenish hue. So you can remove those if you want to but the base, you have to reuse the base right here. And then just prise right off. You just pull the bulb out and pull it in. Small note like they said online. It doesn't quite exactly go in. You can see it wiggles a little, very slightly. It shouldn't be a major issue at all. And then these over here, number 74 bulbs, will come with the base itself on already. So you just put them in and discard the old ones right there. So I just put them in like so. Just make sure you got it in right. There we go, it can only go in. Okay, I plug them all in. They're pretty simple. You might have to wiggle a little bit because it won't fit in exactly, you know, since uh, like the markings are a little different. See right there, create another set. But if it doesn't work when you plug it in, you probably have to insert it the other way because they are polarized. Same probably with these other main lights right there. So let's plug it in and see if it works. Okay, there's the time, and we're over here to continue with the install. And to install it, which we're going to be putting it back, you just have to remove, let's see, the lower panel. And then this top panel right here, which takes two Phillips screws, which screw up, screwing up there. You remove the top panel first, and then you almost have to remove the bottom one. And then, once you got the bottom one off, then you remove this. This is the one that just snaps on right by the ignition switch right there. And then once you pull that off, then you have to remove, make sure whenever you remove this top part right here, there are uh, two screws on each side of the wheel and also on this instrument unit right here there are four two at the top and then two at the bottom make sure to remove those and then you just pull it forward and they have to carefully remove all I think it's four wiring harnesses over that thing you grip and then you pull you have to be careful with those right there. there's not much clearance back there either and once you got all those done, then you can take the whole unit out. Like I said, let's show LEDs right there. They look pretty nice. You can see instant on, instant off. No fading of any kind. And then the light, you can tell a little bit, yeah, it looks like it's backlit. And then you just put the panel back on. You have to screw this back into place once you situated it. The other part of the dash right there goes right over it. So make sure to put this on first when you're putting it back and when you're disassembling it you have to remove the lower panel and the cover right over the ignition switch first this you remove last now i think we got it on now and then you just put the screws in whoops they have to go over the little plastic anchor right there and then once you situate that and install the screws at the top and you just snap this in at the bottom right here then you can put the lower panel in there just snaps right in and then you put the four 10 millimeter bolts all back in. There's a better look at the OBD2 port. It's that port right there. It's very hard to see. It's not even really marked too clearly. But if you want to do diagnostics or have a heads up display, it's right there. So that will conclude the video. Look for tests. Videos coming soon. Link will be down below. Thanks for watching.